Macy Barber's knee injury at UFC 246. How it happened, what happened, and what happens next. Stay tuned to find out. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one source for information on orthopedic injuries and broken bones that's easy to understand for everybody. That's a little doctor joke we like to make around here. If you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at Stable Knees. And if you like my videos, be sure to share them with somebody that you know, because after all, sharing is caring. So who is Macy Barber and what happened to her at UFC 246? So Macy Barber is a professional UFC fighter. Prior to this fight, she was ranked number nine in the women's flyweight division. She was fighting at UFC 246 on the undercard of the McGregor Cerrone fight versus veteran fighter Roxanne Modafferi. And unfortunately for Macy, she suffered two injuries during this fight, the most important of which occurred during the second round. And although she did suffer two injuries, she was able to continue the fight until the end. So for this fight, Macy adopted what's known as a southpaw stance that was relatively open. So what that basically means is that instead of a conventional stance where she has her left foot forward and her right foot back, she instead has her right foot forward and her left foot back, meaning that she is going to generate all of her power punches with her left hand rather than with her right hand. And I said here that her stance was relatively open. And all that this means is that her back foot, instead of being pointed directly to the fighter, is actually angled away from her body. Her reasoning for adopting this stance may have just been personal preference, or it may have been part of a tactical decision as part of her game plan versus Roxanne. At any rate, during the second round of the fight, while both fighters were standing, she was attacked by Moda Ferry. And rather than sliding back with her left foot to avoid contact, she elected instead to lean back over her planted left foot. This shifted her body weight over the outside edge of her planted left foot while her knee was still bent to the inside, resulting in a dynamic valgus of the left knee. Dynamic valgus describes a movement where axial load is applied to the knee while it is moving through flexion and it is positioned inside the planted foot. And for those of you who don't know, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, dynamic valgus is an ACL killing position. Just ask Thiago Santos, Robert Griffin III, and Clay Thompson. They'll all tell you it's an ACL killing position until proven otherwise. Despite her injury, Macy elected to continue the fight, although she was very clearly affected by her loss of stability of her left knee. After the end of the second round, Macy was examined by the ringside physician. After his examination, you could hear him say to the referee that Macy had suffered a partial ACL tear of her left knee, but she was okay to continue on in the fight. Ringside commentator Joe Rogan was amazed at his ability to assess this and called the ringside physician a human MRI machine. The ringside doctor performed a special test on her left knee while she was seated at the ringside. He flexed her left knee to 90 degrees and then pulled her lower leg forward while placing his thumbs on the joint line between her distal femur and her proximal tibia or the end of her thigh bone and the top of her shin bone. This test is what is known as an anterior drawer test and it allows us to assess for the presence of and the severity of an ACL tear if it is in fact present. This test is known to be 66% sensitive and 88% specific. And that just basically means it has a 66% chance of ruling an ACL tear in and an 88% chance of ruling other diagnoses out. And when this test is performed, based on the amount of movement that occurs, the severity of an ACL tear can be graded from one to three, with one being the least severe and three being the most severe. And although I was not at the ringside with this physician, I believe that there were two factors that contributed to his analysis and his diagnosis. The first factor being the mechanism of injury, meaning dynamic valgus which is the most common mechanism of injury for non-contact ACL tears. The second factor being the anterior drawer test, which would have revealed some degree of laxity in her knee. 
suspect that there was only a slight amount of anterior translation and a positive endpoint suggesting that the injury was only partial in nature. Usually, the anterior drawer test is performed on both knees, with the difference in translation being compared between the two. And this is because each person's joints are different. What is tight on one person may be loose on another. And so you usually have to check the unaffected knee and compare it with the injured knee to have a sense of whether the joint is loose or not for this patient. Unless the injured joint is grossly unstable, it is usually difficult to check only one knee and then make a definitive call from that assessment. At this point, on the day following the fight, we have yet to hear what her definitive diagnosis is. I suspect she'll undergo an MRI first thing tomorrow to determine the extent of her injury and then come up with a potential plan of treatment. But based on what I saw in the video and what we just discussed here, I suspect that Macy is going to have a rather lengthy medical suspension. And I wish her the best of luck in her upcoming recovery and hopeful return to the UFC. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.